met uh, Elaine that I was able to publish her. It was a time when other publishing houses were shedding their poetry lists, which was a great, great boon to Carcanet. That's when I picked up many of our better poets. I met Elaine well before I met uh, Donald Davey, who became one of my gurus. Elaine never became a guru, I'm pleased to say. Um, she always remained a very close friend and uh, a wonderful poet whose, whose poems have developed in lots of ways. We published her most recent novel, uh, which is partly in verse, and we published her collected poems, we published her translations, and uh, each of these books has been a joy to publish and to, well, to read, to edit, and to publish. And I think Portraits has given me a tremendous amount of pleasure, as much as any of the other books, and it's lovely to have you here to share it with us. Really.
name with the same resonance it once had. She was a great beauty. She was the first wife of Yevgeny Yevtushenko, and that's how I met her. He brought me to meet, to see her in her <coughs> staggeringly beautiful flat, which she shared with her fourth husband, and was attached to the Bolshoi Theatre. And she brought me there because she loved Marina to her dime, and he was looking after me because I had translated. your life flirting with Soviet danger. Other writers lost pensions, wrecking cars, freedoms, and some of their lives were milder infringements, but mostly admirers brought champagne and seven foot caviar. These I shared freely. And your beauty made me dumb. And I couldn't <coughs> ask you if you still shook with the fever, broke thermometers and called your neighbor. Or whether the gentle spirit of rain pursued you to the houses of rich party members who urged you closer to the fire as once a mob would have dragged you into the flames to watch. <coughs> Perhaps that Yelavica you invented whose eggs you threatened to crush under your heel revenge. One 
towards you like a terrible fish. Never made land free. Look upon this fin. Observe the lines, the scars, the teeth, the skin. I am old as you will never be. Your life was shorter than Mozart. through the humiliation you were too proud to bear. And now to imagine the motive for your life which troubles you. Was it your poems that demanded that last gesture? I honor your carbon paper sky. winter trees dissolving in their blotting paper clouds. You threw away the last half century as if your death could be a deal you cut with genius in return for fame. And those ferocious poems blossom to damage him when he saw your healthy body there. What if the doctor's number had been found? You had woken up to Ted's embrace, seen his remorse. Would a new life begin? Would rushing death have kept him safely bound? Was that the happy end you fell asleep on? Do not rise up now with your red hair to mock an audience which has come to stare at the fair ground waving in your story. Explain instead 
since you were put in the new pot. Somewhere in your helical code, the instructions have been fucked up. Last year, I picked your fruit with reverence, taking pride in the full flesh. Today, as I feed your roots, the intense blue crystal citrus fruit. Your heady perfume is no longer rich as the low notes of a flute. Bare wood, scuffed petals, no question you're under stress. How can I heal you? More water? Less? Well, this is a peculiar season. I don't even know if it is snow outside the glass or white blossom torn from the late cherry. No matter, but a grey-eyed friend has taken garden shears to my sick tree and boldly snipped the boughs, saying, the roots will search under the soil Yes. 
still hopes. Old dreams. A year of ghosts and the drift of gravel away from the shore, the tide between my toes and no hold against the pull of the sea. Too many friends are gone from every page of my life. And there is even something treacherous in me, <coughs> almost consenting. Yes.